if you are having challenges during brooding then this is the right video for you practically there is no single key success to brooding but paying proper attention to these seven keys to successful brooding management will give you the desired result you so much need the truth is that if you fail to get it right by achieving optimal growth during brooding that loss can never be made up later in the grow out phase mind you a few hours of poor brooding conditions during brooding can have great and negative effect to the whole bed performance for this reason checking your chicks per hour is the key especially in the first three days and as the days goes by lesser attention is required don't skip because at the end of every successful point there is a very important tip you don't need to miss what's up my people welcome to life of a farmer love you can also follow me on my facebook page at life of a farmer love for regular updates i remain your anchor ishokri of okironye you can call me overruns on this channel we discuss how to start your farm challenges faced by farmers and how to control them and also how to make more profit for this reason ensure to subscribe and turn on the bell icon so you don't miss interesting video like this one give this video a like comment and share for others to benefit without wasting your time let's dive into the main cocoa one temperature control this is the most critical aspect during brooding because at this age of the chicks they do not have feather covering to control their body temperature this is the major reason external heat is being given in the brooder house as the ability of the bed to regulate its temperature in an effective manner will directly affect its ability to grow proficiently even with temperature monitors a good farmer or farm manager will always monitor his chicks and makes appropriate adjustments where needs arises and on a more serious note do not expect temperature adjustment to fix every problem every time though temperature is the most commonly monitored and controlled condition in poultry houses especially during brooding but other brooding factors also plays important role to the chicks to improve performance a very practical way to check chicks behavior to know they are getting the required heat is if they spread out all over the pen or house then the temperature is well and evenly distributed then if they huddle close to or under the heat source this is an indication that the temperature is inadequate and there is need to increase it but if they move to the extreme far away from the heat source this is an indicator that there is excessive heat and in this process it is either the heat source is removed lowered or the door is open for fresh cool air to come in the last point is that once you notice that chicks huddle to one side this implies that there is drought and there is need to expand the space one important point i want to share with you at this point is that i always advise farmers to preheat the brooder house 24 hours before the arrival of your chicks this will enable them to quickly adjust or acclimatize immediately you unbox them the second key is litter management the first rule of litter management is to provide comfortable conditions for the chicks and also to reduce the effects that the moisture in the litter and ammonia have on them in fact good litter management sets the stage for success in brooding the rule of thumb is that litter materials must be fresh dry and comfortable for the chicks a good way to test your litter is to hold and mold in your hands if it falls off then it is dry and good to use but if it form a lump after release from grip then it is not advisable to use here is tip number two it is best to spread your litter and heat before chicks arrive any caked litter should be removed as soon as possible as accumulation of caked litter could lead to ammonia buildup especially when there is poor ventilation this then leads us to the third key to successful brooding in poultry which is ventilation ventilation this is as important as all other factors during brooding even with the heat provided to chicks they still need ventilation at some point at some point especially when you notice chicks irrational behavior and there is amino buildup allowing free flow of air either by creating an opening or just simply opening the door of the pen will be very helpful and minimal ventilation should be used during brooding tip number three is that in the brooder house a very small opening can be created both in opposite direction to allow minimal air in and excess heat to escape the fourth is air quality this is where ammonia comes in 
excess ammonia with too high or too low relative humidity can become a serious problem. Ventilation is the only way through which air quality problems can be corrected and this is by increasing the ventilation rate. Too high of ammonia as well as carbon dioxide levels in the brooder house affects the sheep's growth and health. Of a truth, these two problems relating to air quality can actually be minimized by proper litter management and adequate but minimal ventilation. Tip number four here is that the best time to check the air quality of the brooder house is the early morning once you open the door for the first time and ventilation can be implemented to control it. The fifth and sixth points which I combine together are feed and water quality and availability. It's not just about making feed and water to meet the desired quality but they should be readily available. Feed and water quality and availability runs hand in hand and they are both of equal importance. The quicker chicks have access to feed and water of high quality, the better start they will have. One very important point of note is that environmental factors also play a very important role in feed and water availability. This is due to the fact that if the chicks are uncomfortable, either too hot or too cold, and even in drought condition, they will not eat or drink adequately, and this could lead to high mortality. You should endeavor to provide enough feeders and drinkers such that every chick have easy access to them. One way to ensure your chicks are eating and drinking is to carry out crop field tests after 24 hours. And one very important helpful tip is that prior to the arrival of your chicks, place feed and water before unboxing your chicks. This is a very helpful tip as it will enable your chicks to easily differentiate between the wood shavings, feed and water. The last point is what most poultry farmers ignore or pay very little attention to and this is light. Of a truth, chicks grow and perform better the quicker they gain access to feed and water. But light plays a very important role by encouraging feed and water consumption, and as such, it aids in the rapid growth and better performance. On a more serious note, the first 72 hours down to the first 7 days are very important such that mistakes made during this period cannot be corrected. For this reason, to get a better stock, even if you have the best equipment in place, Without following these procedures, you won't get it right. These are the building blocks of poultry farming. And lastly, even with the equipment, checking your chicks every hour is most important. You can use the end screen showing now to watch other interesting videos on farming. Please subscribe and follow me on my Facebook page at Life of a Farmer Loaf. Also turn on the bell icon for prompt updates and give this video a like, comment and share for others to benefit. Thanks and God bless. See you in my next video. Peace out.